Discord is like eight more minutes, man. All right, and go for it. All right, well, welcome to Free Beer Friday After Dark. Working title, maybe we should kind of riff that a little more. Chris, what do you think? Ah, we'll let the audience decide. What do they like? But uh, this is so much more comfortable. We're yeah. not standing here under the bright lights, like all intimidated. The idea of this is we're comfortable. And we just talk more, we finish our beer, and we might slur a little, we might not be <laughs> as edited, poor Joe doesn't want to do any more than this, but talk about what's going on, what we're doing, new products, uh, questions you guys might have that you leave in the comments. Yeah, yeah, the questions, I think that's like the, the coolest part of this, is like if you got any brewing questions, let us know. We're gonna pick one of those questions, and then the winner, you know, the one, we'll answer it on air, or try to attempt mm -hmm. to answer it on air, uh, and then, um, you know, the winner gets a, a gift card. So I love that interactivity. And then the other thing we talked about, Chris, was like, you know, wanting to kind of reward the, 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 you know, the, the real viewers out there. You know, we give away stuff and I think that attracts a lot of people, but you know. That doesn't really attract the, all the people we truly want. Some the, people are the, just in it to win something. They're already gone. They're not gonna watch this segment. So this is for the audience who cares, who, who wants to learn more about brewing, who wants to get questions answered, whether it's about the product we just did or anything else. Yeah, real brewers, this is for you. Well, Vito, the most popular video we've done, actually you've done, has had a ton of comments and questions about your hat. Do you wanna go over that with the audience? Oh yeah, I know what that is. That was the Ken Grossman video. Um, yeah, a bunch of people were like, what? how dare he wear a hat backwards in an interview? And like, how disrespectful. Uh, I apologize, sorry, didn't mean to disrespect you. Uh, I wear my hat because I'm balding and I'm 45 and this is just makes me feel comfortable. And I think a lot of brewers wear hats too. So I don't know if it was really off brand, but you know, there it is guys. I think we touched a different audience on that, that particular video. Yeah, I, I think we went viral and brought in people that are outside of our, yeah. uh, our normal thing. So sorry I wear my hat, I'll keep doing it. Yeah, we're, we're humans. We have a lot of fun doing what we do for a living and uh, we're just gonna keep doing that. All right, so we reviewed, last month we, we brewed on the Anvil Foundry and we reviewed a lot of the questions in there kind of to, you know, to do this whole new segment. So we'll reward uh, maybe several of you, one of you, we'll figure that out later. But anyways, the point of the matter is uh, you asked why we use the malt bag on the outside of the malt pipe rather than put it on the inside of the malt pipe. So Chris. Well, let's just start off with probably the word is habit. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did on the first time I did it based off of comments I found on the Facebook user group for the Brewzilla. And the original Bruzilla had a, it's called a glory hole, um, spillway that goes through. And I always figured if you put the bag on the outside, you're gonna collect everything. If the bag's on the inside, you know, probably you're gonna collect everything, but maybe the spill hole won't work properly. You can't get through um, as easily. So that's why I started putting it where it is. I kind of like it there. It makes it easier to put the malt pipe in and out. I kind of worry that it might mess with the flow, might cause channeling on the inside. So if the bag kind of wrinkles, I could see that being a place when you're sparging that the water could just flow through easily. I don't think it truly matters. I think you do you, you do what you like to do because I think that's where the comments were coming from. And I think some of the equipment's made better than others. The, the, you couldn't do it on the, um, Braumeister, right? Mm -hmm. Like it just doesn't even afford it, but you don't need it. Mm -hmm. it. Everything is so engineered perfectly that there's no need for that. And what we found on the Anvil was we probably didn't need it compared to some of the other systems where maybe everything doesn't fit quite perfectly, made it up where the false bottom hits the basket and such. Uh, great answer. I think that answers questions. Let us know if you guys have any further questions on that. And this is why we call it after hours or after dark, because he said glory hole. <laughs> I thought we weren't getting risque with this. <laughs> I was sitting on that and I'm like, I got this one. Yeah. The beer we're drinking is the Younger, which is pretty special beer. So Vito, why don't you tell us about how you got it this year? So this year, uh, my friends, you know, we, we, we usually, we've done it a lot in the past, you know, with COVID, we stopped doing it, but then we brought it back when they, they brought it back last year and you actually had the lines and all that jazz again. I was constantly like, I'm over it, I'm never waiting in line, but then they call me up and it's always a freaking good time. So anyways, long story short, same group, hit me up. We're gonna do it again this year. Uh, but we had, we did something a little different. So we waited in the line, we went to Windsor, which is my favorite location, cause they got, I mean, both places have great food, but the Windsor's just, you know, like it's just a full on restaurant. Um, um, the other one's a, more of a kind of pizza place if you've been down to the fourth street one. Anyways, long story short, 
there's something special here. They're retiring the old system at the 4th Street location. Um, and I, like I said, I wanted to go to Windsor, so we went there, and then we waited in line at the 4th Street location. So we did what I like to call a uh, like a hat trick, a, a rush. Du double dip. Double dip, a double dip. Um, and, and, and you know, uh, Vinny's walking the line at the one location, saying hi to everybody as he always does, which is you know just amazing. That's a such a class, class act yeah. guy, uh, so cool. But then you know we're, we're hanging out at the other location. He's down there. He sees us in the restaurant, so he's like, "You guys are at both places," you know. So I got a six pack of Pliny the Younger because they upped the bottle count. Usually you get two bottles. This year it's three, so I got three from both locations. Got a wristband from both locations. Got pours. I got my Pliny bites from the Four Street, which I love, and then I got my uh, my French dip from the other place, which I love too. So I kind of got to have best of both worlds. That's pretty awesome. I, you know, to be honest, I've never actually made the journey for the day. Mm. I was part of the. I'm a tech guy and I was part of the geeks during COVID who I did get a oh, case that. of bottles um, and I was lucky and I loved sharing that with all my friends and I think you got some. I got a bottle, yeah, thank and, you. And a ton of fun, but that's what this event means. It's special because it's unique and it's limited, but it's also something we share. You share like an awesome experience with your friends. In fact, my friends who I was they were trying to get me to go with them, ran into Vito because he knows oh, me yeah. from the show. So they send me a selfie of the two of them, which I got FOMO at that point, <laughs> um, but couldn't make it up that day. But it's sharing good experiences with your friend. And you know, it's like, that's what craft beer is about. That's what homebrew is about. And it's like, it's, it's such a cool experience. The, 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 the conversations in the line are pretty fun. And there was some crazy ones. There was one point where like me and my friends are hanging out. One guy, you know, who's kind of getting to know us just like, like stops the conversation. He's like, so what do you, what's your guys' opinion on Sasquatch? Uh, and yeah, right? Like it was, pretty, <laughs> this was before the beer? This is before the beer. <laughs> Super nice guy, uh, crazy question. But anyways, like stuff like that. Like just no, no, random no, no, no. You don't get to just leave that question. Did he, was he a believer? He, he's a believer. Um, he's a hunter. He said he saw some stuff. Okay. I've watched the Ancient Aliens episode, so I, I'm kind of familiar too. Uh, what is your opinion on Sasquatch? Uh, you know? My opinion on Sasquatch is... Uh, I don't know. Yeah, there's, there's uh, whatever, whatever makes you happy, man. Mine's the same as aliens. To, yeah. to think that we're the only ones out here yeah. who have some sort of intelligence. I don't know that he looks like, you know, what we would think of an ape running through the woods that's super huge, but there are things out there I gotta believe. Um, I think where we landed on, it's an alien in a gully suit. <laughs> Done. All right, this next segment we're calling Show and Tell. Remember when you were a kid and there was new things you were excited about and you want to tell your friends about? That's what we're doing here. These things might not make a video in and of themselves, but they're cool new products that are in the pipeline or already for sale that we think are worth talking about. Yeah, we have a new products page on our website where, you know, our product team is bringing it. Every month there's, you know, usually 30, maybe, you know, 10 to 30 new products that are hitting. And it, you know, it could be anything from a little gasket to some, you know, X3, things like that. So um, I, we picked our favorite products. I'm going to start with mine. Here's my show and tell. It's the mead making kit from Pop Culture. So um, why I like this is I like mead. Um, and then I also helped uh, Pop Cultures and a friend of mine, Pavel, who is an amazing award winning mead maker helped me help pop cultures design this kit specifically around the recipe so it's a really good recipe mead's amazing what i like it's one gallon you know five gallons of mead's kind of a lot i think pavel would disagree but he'd be like five gallons is perfect he's russian so that's his accent sorry guys um but this is a one gallon kit so it's it's great for making uh check it out super affordable great way to get into making some mead um so this is my favorite product for this uh this month and uh, you kind of skipped over one thing, which is I think this is like a perfect gift. Ah, no, this is a great, that's a great point. I'm yeah. talking about making mead for myself. Look at me, selfish, selfish, selfish. <laughs> Wraps up nice. So yeah, this is a great gift idea. It's that's, affordable, yeah. it's only one gallon, but yet it's everything they need to get started and uh, just something fun that almost anyone can do. You don't need any more specialized equipment to make this. Yeah, no, and that's that's a great point too. Like the. These are great gifts. The one of the, that I love is the hot sauce kit. I've been making a ton of hot sauce now. So Pop Cultures makes some cool stuff um, that's not just you know beer fermenting, you know cheese making, all that kind of stuff. So so check it out and make some mead. Cool. Well, my show and tell <laughs> is the four liter Oxbar mini keg, and we've had the eight liter in. And I got super excited when it came in thinking I was gonna to try to reproduce an old product called the Tapa Draft, which we sold a ton of. And the idea that made it so cool was you put it in your fridge like this, 
and you served beer and it had spousal approval. You're not cutting shelves, you're not modifying a fridge. So it can go in your house, tiny space, and have some beer serving. Well, I think this is gonna be the guy because it is so small. Um, and you know they already make a lid. You just basically slide this down. For this size, we cut this down, but you have a filtered bottom, it curves. So essentially, right here, you can run in some CO2. If you don't have a handheld one, you could put your line in. I guess now you're modifying, but the idea is you can do small batch serving. But the other thing I think is cool with this is taking out some of your beer to add something else to it. Taking like the Belgian quad mm -hmm. and adding different oaks. Well, I can do it in a much smaller size mm. and see what that flavor impact is um, without worrying about having to have all these tiny stainless kegs in my fridge. Those are cool, but this is way cheaper. And the PET way that this is made isn't like, oh my God, your beer is gonna last three days in here and oxidize. No, you should get several months, depending on how hoppy it is and whatnot, but at minimum, three to four months without a much oxygen ingress. And it's pretty lightweight too. So like we talked about traveling, so backpacking, right? That's where yeah. I'm going with this. Yeah. <laughs> Pop it in and, and uh, have beer all day. Well, and it's safe, you know, pool side, whatnot. Oh, you don't yeah. have to worry about glass. So we're missing out on probably both of our favorite new product. That's because we just talked about it, but that's the X3 here. I mean, pretty amazing. They took something that I thought was unimprovable and they improved it. So, uh, you know, having any issues putting this lid on, it's so easy. And that, that's, that's probably it. It's the ease of putting it on and getting the seal is just incredible. Yeah, I love this TC clamp, uh, being able to go into that higher pressure above yeah. uh, 15 PSI. So really excited to ferment in this. Well, fermented in it once, but I'm really excited to ferment in it again. Huh. So I, I get to take excited, this home? I think you're excited to have this at home so you can ferment it when you want. Yeah. So we got to do a video with Bear Bottle and that was pretty cool. The word cute came up a lot, but they loved this conical because quite frankly, it is exactly the same thing they're fermenting in. In some cases better. They well, would say. Yeah. <laughs> has more ports, yeah. um, but just in terms of changing that lid style, not that the old one was bad, but just making it more universal and common, they were just like, this thing is insane. Yeah, and to let you guys know, the video's coming out later, but the vibe of that video was like, we're using equipment and being able to mimic a commercial beer was was the goal there. So we, we poured it at a, and we fooled a lot of people. I don't say fooled, but you know they couldn't discern which one was commercial because the equipment available to us home brewers is on par, and if not, in some cases, better than commercial brewing equipment now. All right, so Chris and I are almost done with our beer. Uh, let us know what you thought of this new segment. Is it gonna last? If you got a new name for the, the idea name, uh, did you enjoy this? Let us know. Cheers. Cheers. Woo! I'll see what they think. Yeah, see where that went. <laughs> I love that we're getting...